Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be following up on the Alpaca Market Data API. In the first video on the Alpaca Market Data API, I covered streaming over WebSockets. But in this video, I'm going to just focus on the uh, standard uh, REST interface here for the um, Alpaca Market Data API. Uh, specifically, we're going to go over the bars endpoint here. So uh, we're going to use this data.alpaca.markets endpoint. And then specifically, we're going to download uh, data for multiple time frames for a particular uh, stock symbol. Now, we're going to first get this to work with one stock symbol, and then we're going to write a script to retrieve all the market uh, data uh, for all the symbols in the NASDAQ 100 with a single web request. Uh, so this will be uh, the holdings of ticker symbol QQQ, which you can find here if I click uh, product details. Um, the market data API allows you to fetch uh, data, either the minute time frame, the five minute time frame, 15 minute, or daily time frame. And so we'll try this with multiple time frames. And it lets you grab up to 200 simple names at a time. So uh, we'll get the NASDAQ 100 so that since that'll let us grab all this data in a single request, right? And so on Invesco here, there's the holdings for the NASDAQ 100. And I'll put this link inside of the README for this uh, video. And I'll post the source code as always into our uh, uh, GitHub page under Hacking the Markets. And the repository this will be under is Alpaca Market Data BTA Lib. So after we download all of the market data for the symbols in the QQQ, we're going to apply some technical indicators to the, those, the data for those symbols using a library called BTA Lib which is basically a newer version of the technical analysis library. It's created by the author of Backtrader, who uh, we've, just, we've covered the Backtrader backtesting uh, framework in this channel before, so you can go back and watch some videos on that. But it looks like he's went ahead and written his own technical analysis library after finding some shortcomings in some of the other technical analysis libraries that are out there on uh, GitHub and in the Python package index. And also it has some updates. Even uh, he even says there in the old TA lib uh, that a lot of people use, there's actually some, some problems uh, in that library even. So uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna check out this library and see how it can help us apply some technical indicators uh, to uh, the Alpaca market data uh, that we retrieve for the QQQ. So uh, that's it for the introduction for what we're making. So let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and get uh, a single, uh, let's let's try this uh, alpaca bars endpoint here. And let's see if we can just download uh, the five minute data for one particular symbol. Um, so we've, we've uh, used the alpaca uh, API a number of times. So all you really need is an API key. And as always, uh, I can log into my alpaca account here and I will do that, and I'm already in there, and I'll go over to the paper trading account here, and we can just grab an API key, and for each video, I create a new one here, and so I'm just gonna copy this API key, and we're just gonna create a config.py file, and this will have our alpaca, um, our API key, and we can just set it like that, and then we can get our secret key like that, secret key, right, and I'll set that like that, and then I'm also gonna set some headers as a constant. So any of our HTTP requests to the Alpaca API uh, need these headers. APCA-API key ID, right? And that for that key, the value is just our API key that we just defined up there. And then the other name is APCA API secret key. All right and we can just set that to secret key, and then we have our headers. And I'll also create another constant in our config for the uh, bars URL. So I'll just say bars URL equals HTTPS uh, data.alpaca.markets slash v1 slash bars. And I got that from uh, here. So it's uh, v1 slash bars, and then market data, the base URL is data uh, dot alpaca dot market slash v1 and then this has the names of uh, the headers that we need and we define those here so we can create multiple requests and just use the same key and headers here we're just defining that once in our config.py so the next step here let's see if we can make an http request to uh, the alpaca market data api and retrieve uh, some bar data for uh, a particular stock symbol let's say microsoft so uh, let's do that so I'll call this bars.py. I got a new file 
and I'm going to do import config and requests. And as always, if you don't have a uh, request installed, uh, you should have it by now that if you've watched any of these videos before, but you can just pip install requests and we'll use that to uh, create HTTP requests to Alpaca, right? So now I'll do that. So I've imported requests. And so what we want to do now is set a variable and we'll do r equals request.get and then we'll use config.barsurl and then the headers are going to be equal to our config.headers, right? And so if we do that um, and just print the content that comes back, we'll probably get an error here, right? We're just requesting the URL as is. And so I'm going to hit my play button, run the script, right? And it'll say not found. Uh, so there's actually a, a requirement that we actually send it a symbol. And so let's go ahead and go into the uh, data API and let's go into bars, right? So it's v1 slash bars, but we also have to put a time frame. And so we can, looks like we can put one minute, five minute, 15 minutes, or one day. So let's just start with five minutes. So let's do config.bars URL and then just add uh, five minutes to the end of it here. So it'll be slash five minutes, right? And so we'll just call this minute bars URL. And then instead of config, we'll do minute bars URL, right? Okay, now if we run that again, this will tell us at least one symbol is required. So you'll see under path parameters, uh, under query parameters, I mean, uh, it looks like one or more symbol names split by commas is required. And so what we want to do here is put a query string. So we'll do question and then we'll say uh, symbols equals Microsoft, right? And then if we do that, just like that, we have a whole data set of five minute bars for Microsoft stock. And let's uh, clean this up a little bit. Let's uh, print it out in a pretty JSON format. That way we can read it a little easier. So I'm going to print R instead of R.content. I'm going to print R.json like that. And then I'll also do JSON.dumps. So I'm going to import the JSON module for Python. And I'm going to do JSON.dumps, R.json. And let's say indent equals four. And this will like indent this out a little bit. Uh, and then I need one more parentheses. And if I do that, um, you'll see if I run this guy again, uh, you'll get one bar per line. And so if you look at the structure here, uh, you can see it has T, O, H, L, C, and V. And so what that means, T is just a timestamp. So it's a Unix timestamp that represents some particular date and time. And you can see uh, these are 300 seconds apart. So it's like 500, then 800, right? This one's 200 and 300 seconds apart, right? 300 divided by 60. So those are five minutes apart, right? So we requested for five minute bars. And so we have the open, high, low, and the close for that particular five minute time interval. And then we also have the volume, right? And so we have a big old data set here of lots of bar data. And I believe by default, they give you what, 100? Let's see the limit. So the default is 100 if you don't specify um, a number, and so you can actually request a thousand uh, bars. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll do and limit equals a thousand just to get more data. And let's do that and do that. And yeah, so I'm gonna do a little arrow here and let's capture that to a file. So we'll do out, capture it to output.txt. If I do that, we got a new file called output.txt, right? And so we have the symbol Microsoft and then we have a list. So it's JSON data. Uh, there's a key for Microsoft for each symbol. And then there's a list of bars with a timestamp, open, high, low, and close. And if we scroll down, you'll see, you know, there's what, 8,000 lines in here. So these are about eight lines each. So it looks like we have 1,000 data points. And let's just plug in one of these timestamps into Unix timestamp.com uh, and just see uh, what how far back of data we got. Um, and even though it's limit to, limited to a thousand bars, what we can technically do is use these uh, start and end parameters here to like specify, you know, January 1st of 2018 through December 31st of 2018 and like get like a thousand data points for one range, do another request, get another thousand data points. So this is just to make sure you don't try to request the entire data set at once. Uh, you can do multiple requests for multiple symbols uh, and, and, and get whatever time frame you need. So. 
Uh, I'm going to copy this timestamp just to see how far back of data we got. So you can use whatever utility you use. There's actually a date uh, command here where you can type date-r and it'll give you a, t a timestamp. Or you can use unixtimestamp.com. Um, and it looks like this gave us uh, five minute data uh, back to uh, June 16th. So that's that's really only a couple of weeks ago, right? So we have a way to get uh, five minute timestamps here or five minute bars. Uh, let's go ahead and see if we can try a different time frame. Let's say we, we're not interested um, in the uh, minute time frame. Let's say we want an entire day. We just want the open high, low, close of the day for like a daily candlestick chart, right? So let's change this URL. Let's let's make another one called daily bars URL. And then let's use just string formatters now to be a little nicer. Uh, so this will be our time frame. And then question symbols equals uh, some symbol and limit. Uh, we'll just keep the limit at a thousand. We'll let uh, we'll leave this as a placeholder. Config bars URL as a placeholder. Um, and so the day bars URL is, uh, you just put day there and that'll work. So we'll put the word day here. And then let's try multiple symbols too. So for symbols here, um, we'll do dot format and we'll pass it our config dot bars URL, right? And then we'll pass it a comma separated list of symbols. So let's try Apple and Microsoft in a comma separated list like that. And then instead of minute bars URL, let's do day bars URL and see if we can get multiple symbols uh, for uh, the daily time frame. And let's try that. And so we'll output that to output.txt and let's see how it differs. Okay, so I should have another output text here. And let me close it just to make sure that refreshed, right? Okay, so we have Apple there. And so let's try this. So you see the, the timestamps are further apart. So now, if I put uh, date dash r that, now let me copy that. All right, so that gives me July 13th of 2016. So now that we do a thousand data points on the daily time frame, you know we're going uh, pretty far back. So because that's uh, across multiple years, so four years. Uh, you don't trade on weekends, so uh, you can figure that that sounds about right to me. So about four years of data. Okay. And so now if I get this next timestamp here, you'll see July 13th, July 14th. So it looks like they just give you a Unix timestamp and it's the same uh, time uh, on each day. And so this will get, so it looks like a thousand data points got us from 2016, 2016 through the present. So I'm recording this on July 2nd, uh, 2020. So we have a lot of uh, daily uh, time frame data points here, right? And then you can see, if you would have bought Apple in 2016, great investment. It was under $100. You could have just held it the whole time and not bothered with anything, right? You could have just held Apple and like quadrupled your money, right? And got dividends, the whole thing. So, so buying Apple is usually a good move. All right. So uh, let's see. We got Apple. Let's see if Microsoft came in. Yeah, so we did multiple symbols, right? So we got Apple. And then now we have 8,000 more data points here because we have Microsoft or 1,000 more data points here taking up 8,000 lines. So Microsoft is another key. And so uh, basically it just uh, gives you a big dictionary or a big JSON object and each key is a symbol. And then you get a list of data points associated with those symbols. So format seems very easy to use. Uh, so that is great as well. So now that we know how to grab multiple symbols and we've grabbed data points for uh, the daily time frame, uh, let's go ahead and do what we said as far as getting all of the uh, symbols in the QQQ. And so if you go to the product detail page for QQQ here, um, you can click on, is it portfolio? That's not it. Fund holdings, right? So if you click on fund holdings, it'll show you all of the holdings, which isn't in an easy to use format, but I noticed there's this Excel download here. So you just click on that. And if you open that, you get this nice CSV file that has the names of all the companies and all of the tickers. So we're mainly interested in the symbols so that we can pass them as a comma separated list to the Alpaca market data endpoint that we have. And so let's see if we can pull out these symbols and then format them as a comma separated list. So now that I've downloaded that, I'm gonna go to downloads here. And I'm gonna just rename this to 
qqq.csv and then I'm going to copy it over to my project directory just so I know where it is very easily. So this is my BTA lib. I'm going to make a new directory called uh, data. So I'll do new folder data and then we'll have this data set of QQQ in there. I'll commit that to the repository in case you don't want to you know, download it yourself. So I have QQQ CSV um, and actually this QQQ CSV has all this extra stuff in it. Um, I'm going to yeah, this is fine, this is fine. Um, so what we're gonna do, let's go ahead and open that file. So I'm gonna comment all this out for a second just to focus on one task. And so I'm gonna do F equals open, and then I'm gonna open data slash qqq.csv.readlines. And if I print that and I run my program again, you'll see that we have a list of everything in that file. And let me scroll down here. Don't show that. Yeah, you see the bracket at the end. So this is just a list. And so if we were to loop through this for uh, holding in F, and let's call this lines. So it's a list of lines in the file. And so for holding in lines, or we can just call it holdings. Let's call it holdings, right? For holding in holdings, print holding. Very easy. And let's run this again. And you see on each line, we have one holding. And really, we only care about uh, the symbol here. That's the main thing we need. So let's just extract the zero, first, second index in each of these uh, lists here. So I'm going to do, uh, I'm actually going to use a list comprehension here. So if you're unfamiliar with that, uh, you just uh, make a list here. And so I'm going to say symbols equals this. And it's like defining a loop inside of a list and then uh, it's, it's an easy one-liner we can use to get a list of all of these symbols. So I'm going to do um, holding two for holding in holdings, right? Um, and let's see what happens there. So I'm going to print the symbols. Um, and the second, oh, it's treating, so the, each of these is actually a comma separated string. So right now it's getting the second letter, it's treating it like a string. Uh, so what we need to do is do holding dot split comma. And so it'll split this into a list and then it'll get the second item in the list. So if I do that, you'll see now we have a list of all of the symbols here. And it looks like there's a little extra space. So we're gonna wanna trim the space so we can do dot strip. Okay, and if we do that, it trims all the extra space. And then also we have this extra holding ticker right here, which is not a real symbol. Uh, so we'll use Python's list syntax to do uh, one till the end. So the first index to the end. So that'll leave out the first item. So I'm gonna do that. And now we got a nice clean list of all of the symbols in that file. And we'll do one more thing since this is a list and Alpaca wants a comma separated uh, string here. What we can do is do symbols uh, equals symbols uh, dot, or actually we'll, we'll join them with a comma. So we can do a comma dot join and symbols, and this should print them all together in one long comma separated list, just like that. So we've processed that CSV file and created a simple list of symbols. Now there's a variety of ways to do this. If you want, you don't have to do a one-liner. You could do four holding and holdings and write you know, a few lines of code and then append it and all that sort. It's a little less efficient, but uh, it's also maybe clearer for you to read. And it's not that important. It's not like this is you know some huge computation where you need to be real efficient. We're just trying to get the job done and get a comma separated list here. So uh, we have our symbols. And now let's see if we can send that to the day bars URL, right? So instead of Apple and Microsoft, we can use our symbol list here, symbols, right? And then now let's try to fetch this again and dump the data out. And we'll do that. And then we'll output it to output.txt again. And let's see if we get a lot more data for, you know, hundred over a hundred symbols. So I'm gonna do that and then look at our output now. And you see now we have like Adobe in there uh, Apple, uh, we should have Google, right? And so now we have a giant list and there's hundreds of thousands of lines in this list. And so we have a thousand uh, daily bars for all the symbols in the QQQ. 
All right, so that's pretty good. It looks like this video is hitting the 20 minute mark now, so I don't wanna keep going on and on. I'm going to create another follow-up video here. So stay tuned for the next video, and I'm gonna show you how to use uh, the Backtrader TA lib to apply technical analysis to all of these data sets. So uh, thanks a lot for watching, and stay tuned for the next video.